Now the drama, it's the mystery of Edwin Drood, Charles Dickens' final novel, introduced here by his daughter Kate. Did my father know, when he started the book, that it would finish him? All those years of success, love from the audience. Did he know that one day the bill would be presented to Mr Dickens? So there's a mystery, there's evidence, and many questions. As for answers... One day, my dear, dear Edwin, the bill will be presented. But not today. Not tonight, Jack. If I'm not mistaken, there's dinner to be had tonight. <laughs> the lad's hungry. But lads always are. I'll take your coat off. Stand by the fire. You've no more than five years to pull on me for that lad, Jack. <laughs> so don't come at the old fella with this fella. And don't mollycoddle. I hate being mollycoddled. Well then, come on through and sit down. There's sack and clarity. Two young men. In fact, nephew and uncle. And John Jasper, choir master at the cathedral, does love to come at the fogey, whilst Edwin Drood, young Edwin, is a lover. Well, the boy is cheerful tonight. Ain't he? And what a spread. Someone's birthday, is it? But not yours, that's for sure. <laughs> Drink up, I'll carve. Pour for yourself. Not mine, but... Rosa's! <laughs> Bumpers to Rosa. <laughs> Give me your hand, Jack. For it's Rose's birthday. With all my heart, my dear, dear boy. I wish the both of you the greatest happiness that creation may shower like gentle rain upon... But no, what is it? Sit, Jack, sit. It's nothing. It's something. I know you, my dear. Or nothing that may disturb a fine dinner. Let's drink again. Nine times nine and one to finish. To Rosa! To Rosa! Tough nuts to crack, Brazils. <laughs> Enough of that, Ned. Rosa, you see. I choose her above any other girl in the world, Jack. Then what <clears throat> are we talking about? If I had the choice, I'd choose her. But I don't, do you see? Nut. <clears throat> I eat the nut. I grant you there's a possible world in which the nut is not eaten, but it don't concern me. What is, is. Because my dead father and Rosa's dead father had his married in anticipation. Two orphans brought together... In love. Brought together because of their father's will, Jack. Your life is yours. You can eat as many nuts as you want, but I'll never know if... if I act because I want to or I must. For you, life goes on steady, easy, settled. Ned, Ned. Jack, if, if I've upset you, I... Never in this world. Only you seemed for a moment... Nothing, really. Just a pain. An old pain that I've been taking medicine for. It comes and goes, and... See, it goes. Thirty miles distant, and a few days in time from Cloisterham, John Jasper finds himself ascending the yawning heights of a tenement in London. Back again, lovey. My special dear, shall I fill a few for you tonight? Just remember the pricey, eh? You say what? Come the morning, there's the bill to pay. The price for the medicine, dearie. Do you dream? Can you dream? You tell Princess Puffer which is the dream and which the waking. Take it. Take it. Grave is sleeping. A body sleeping dead away. Who cares as long as who oh. pays, eh? Why do we do it to ourselves, eh? Seek oblivion. Don't ask me, dear. You're the professor, eh? Yeah. What are you talking about, woman? Is this thing to you that gabble away in your dreams? It's an education, ain't it, just? 
Give me water, damn you. What gavel are you talking about? Words, I mean. What words? Gabble, gabble words. I don't understand that. Let me down, dearie. I'll mix you another. No one mixes like the princess. You ask old Mr. Z, he'll tell you. As long as you pays, this is your house. Oh, this rat heap mine. From cathedral to this. <laughs> so it drives you, eh? Yes, another, why not? Another mile to oblivion. Another, I said. You'll pay. You promise. I'll pay. I'll pay. Hey, you'll pay. You'll pay. <laughs> but you see, Jack, you are respected. A lay presenter. What you've done with a choir, you're teaching. Why, Rosa says there never was such a music teacher as you. And never such a pupil, Ned, but I tell you, by God, sometimes it comes upon me like a black hound. All my music becomes frozen into cold stone like this damned cathedral I serve. I'll never say so, my dear fellow. Here, take my hand. Take hold. Don't drift away on the stream. I shall hang on to hope, then. As you to Rosa. See? I have the picture you made of her on the wall there. <laughs> well, I am a little proud of it. I think I caught something of her look, her spirit. Take care, Ned, or else we both may drift away upon the rising tide. Drink up, Jack. Port will set you right. And I do love Rosa. Mm. And for all my fancies, in a year I'll carry her away from the Academy and we shall be Mr and Mrs Edwin Drood. And I shall go engineering into Egypt, and she with me. The Romans, you know, forbade travel to Egypt. They saw it as a land of mysteries, of sphinxes and crocodiles. I shall endeavour not to get eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> Though, Rosa would be a tasty morsel to be snapped up on the banks of the Nile. <laughs> Never say it, Ned. As for me, I fear that when you go, my life will... Ah, more port and nuts. But... Be warned. What is hidden will not be denied. The reckoning will be presented. Which reminds me, old fellow, if I slip away to present a parcel at the Academy for Rosa's birthday. As many pairs of gloves as she is years old today. I may not call, of course, at this time of night, but they should be there. Otherwise the poetry don't quite work, you see. The following day... Edwin visits the Nuns House Academy for Young Ladies, under the direction of... Miss Twinkleton, how does the afternoon find you? Pretty much as you do yourself, Mr. Drood. Pleased to enter. You have come to see... Miss Bud. I hope her birthday was all that could be expected. Well, you may ask yourself, sir. She awaits thither. Thither? You mean your parlour as... Manners and custom decree. Deportment, Mr. Drood. Then thither I go, Miss Twinkleton. Excuse me. Rosa, may I wish you were deferred, but nonetheless... What are you doing? Picking out notes, Eddie. What does it look like? But why, since you can play perfectly well, are you picking out notes so badly? It is not easy picking out notes with one's apron over one's head, Eddie. Manners did prompt me to forbear to mention it, but now that you have, as it were, broken the silence... Oh, do stop, Eddie. It's too ridiculous. Agreed. But I'm not the one with an apron over his head. Shall I go? No. The girls would all be asking why. Then please do take that thing off your head. There. And there you are. So beautiful. And there you are. So beautiful too. The two of us too beautiful for our own good, I dare say. I got the gloves last night. They are delightful. How was your birthday? Splendid, Eddie. Everyone gave me a present. We had a feast and a ball. Ah, oh. oh do forgive me. Tweezers. Left here somewhere. Tweezers. Mm. Ah, yes. Aha. Oh, carry on. Carry on. 
The proprietor wishes to ensure the proprieties are observed. <laughs> A ball? Any partners? We danced with each other, silly. Ah. Though some of the girls did make game to be their brothers. <laughs> Such fun. And did anyone make game... To be you? Mm, well, Isabella did. <laughs> really? Was she... Oh, excellent. Such saucy lips has Isabella. Huh. But I would have nothing to do with him and he with me. His kisses were for others. Oh, do excuse me. <laughs> Spectacles. Mr. Trude, you're pale. Are you... A fresh air, Miss Twinkleton. We're about to go for a walk, if that may be permitted. Splendid. Fresh air. Deportment. Nothing like it. Don't forget your gloves. Now imagine, Eddie, you was you. I mean, the you you was last night. And I was no one in particular. You can't be no one, Rosa. For now, Eddie. And say so I was to ask, is you engaged? Yes. Nice? Charming. Tall? Tolerably. See, not like me at all. A classical nose, I expect. Yes, ish. Big then. Tolerably too. Hmm. Not given to fences. Sensible. And this sensible woman likes the idea of being carried off to Egypt, does she? She has an sensible interest in the triumphs of engineering that are to be engineered there. To wit, she don't hate boilers and things. Boilers? No. Things? Who can say? No oh, things. Things! Rosa, let's be friends. I... I wish we could be friends, but don't you see, it's because we can't that we try each other so. We might both have been happier if what is supposed to be had been left as what might have been. Rosa, I'm not that clever outside of my line. I'm not sure I'm that clever in it, but I want to do the right thing. There's not, I mean, anyone else. No, Eddie. Just the thing. The endless thing, like stones, like the cathedral there. Out of the past that will not let us go. They're practicing for Evensong. I think I can even hear Jack's voice. Take me back now, dear Eddie. I don't want to be here when they come out. Hurry. Hurry. Where? Oh, where are you now, John? What do you say, Princess? Yeah. Thou shalt not steal an empty feet when tis so lucrative to cheat. Ah, you're not cheating me, dearie. Not your own sweet Princess Papa. I'm done with you. Do you hear? Finished. Not done with me, you ain't. There's a darkness waiting for you, dearie. 